All right, so in the uh, welcome to another Ask Me Anything series. Uh, today we actually get a question regarding the exotic car series. I'm actually glad people are starting to ask questions regarding specific products because obviously I have a lot to share about each and I can directly answer those because I wrote most of them. Uh, exotic car series question that came to us this time was how much money do you need to get started? So let's understand the exotic car series and, and kind of a, what it's about and what it's not about. Uh, you want to flip watches, probably a better bet to make money. You want to flip cars to make money, you're going to need to be able to play with other people's money or you're going to have to be able to either raise capital or have amazing, incredible credit and you're going to have to have great relationships with banks. That's a game that takes longer to kind of establish yourself in. It's a little bit harder to play. It's still profitable if you do it the right way, but it's also harder to make a living off of something that has so many variables to it. The way I think about exotic car secrets is this. If you're gonna pay to drive a car anyways, right? Like you're gonna go and buy your shitty Honda Accord. Why not buy like an S-Class Mercedes and have the exact same liability or payment on it? Especially if you're not gonna lose money on it, right? So think about it this way. I think of exotic car secrets as a way to substitute your existing piece of shit or the fact that you're on foot with having a vehicle that doesn't make you lose money over time. So the number one goal for exotic car secrets is not to make you money, but rather to prevent you from losing any. Uh, the second goal for exotic car secrets is to enable you to drive a nicer car than what you would typically be able to buy if you thought about the conventional way to buy a car, which is you walk in a dealership, you find a lease deal, you sign up, and then you go drive your piece of shit Jetta where you could be driving a BMW M6 instead, right? There's so many more things that happen when you do that. Like you get obviously better uh, at networking, you know, you have better opportunities out of you. There's so many better things that occur as a result of you having a nicer car. Plus, it gives you a boost in morale and you feel good, especially if you're a car guy like me, right? So that, those are kind of the baseline for what Exotic Car Secrets does. Now, as you get better at it and as you kind of continuously do it, you're going to have opportunities to pick up certain cars that you may want or not uh, because you're kind of in the network that, that are going to be great resale cars, like cars that you can just move and make a few bucks on. I want to say a few bucks on average, like two, two to five grand, right? Two to five grand may seem like a lot of money, but the headaches you go through, obviously, may be a lot of work for that. So, you know, how much money do you need to get started? Really not that much. You could buy, you could start with $10,000 cars, which gets you roughly a $10,000 car is a car that at some point costed 30 to 60,000. There's plenty of BMWs for that. There's plenty of Jaguars. There's plenty of great cars that are very little money, but at some point were big money. Now, the goal is to understand that we are not talking about buying salvage cars or fucked up cars and then, you know, flipping them or anything. We're talking about buying perfectly, legitimately clean, nice cars at a fraction of cost, understanding what the market does to each make and model and understanding why certain makes and models are better for resale and in the long term. So in the short term, just knowing what to buy and how to buy it is what we teach at Exotic Car Secrets. Now, some people start with roughly three to five grand and they buy cheaper cars and they kind of work their way up because they identify those deals, while some other people use it to leverage this for their own car so they can eventually get it and out. It really depends on you. Uh, the other part is also credit driven. You know, if you're someone who has great credit and you could normally afford a normal car for like a Volkswagen Jetta for 20,000, which would roughly end you having, let's say, uh, a two, three hundred dollar car payment, now you can also have the exact same thing on your starter cars. You don't have to buy a car that gives you an $800 car payment and then get your money back because you may not be able to afford 800 a month, right? So you may be able to very well start with just having nothing more than a cheaper car that is a $200 a month payment or that has two to three grand in profit in it that you can flip and get your money back out of and, and some more too. So the goal is to find exactly what I'm talking about, these specific cars that are going to be helpful to you making money. Uh, especially in the earlier stages, if you're short on money and your credit is not as incredible or can't afford to kind of uh, finance cars that are, you know, over 50K. I find that the sweet spot is in the over 50K cars. Why do I say that? Because you have to understand perspective. When you're buying a 10K car, you have to sell it roughly for, let's say, for example, a 20 to 30% increase in order to make like three grand. When you buy a 50K car, you have, a, let's say, a 10% play window is five grand. So what I'm trying to say is that there's more play with the larger margin cars, which is why you can sometimes buy Bugattis for like 700K, and then if you find the right buyer at like 900, you just made 200 grand on a car, right? So it's incredible, but not many people can afford to buy a $700,000 car, let alone 
finance one. So again, it all depends on your personal situation. It all depends on your circumstance. We have people doing this in the program that I've started with $3,000 old Escalades. We have people in the program that do this with $40,000, $50,000 SL65s. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I've been doing this forever. We're sitting in my Maserati Quattroporte, which is bought using the same system, uh, which has about 10 k in equity in it without me paying a dime right from the start. So, you know, like, and then, you know, you can also run into problems, which we'll talk about as well uh, in some of the upcoming case studies. But exotic car secrets, first, especially if you're low on cash, think of it as a substitute for a car, not really a way to make money. The watch flipping course, on the other hand, that you can move a lot of inventory, you can move it quickly and be successful with it. Uh, very, very successful with it because you can ship watches quickly, easily, and, and for a very, very cheap amount. So I highly recommend it. Uh, I think it's a great, great uh, starting point from a money-making standpoint, and it makes a lot more sense to go down that route uh, instead of focusing on the car one, especially if you're low on budget or, or don't have that much money to kind of focus on. I hope that answered the question. See you guys next week. All right, so the next question for Ask Me Anything series is when should you go all in on an investment? Uh, meaning kind of like, I guess, I guess.